My name is Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years, but at the end of 2016, I realized that I had to quit racing and get a job. I couldn't be the best at pro cycling, so I've decided to be the absolute worst at retiring. This year, when I'm not working on weekends, I'm going after hill climb records on YouTube. So please enjoy Worst Retirement Ever. So Tucson, uh, if you buy a flight from LAX, now it's an hour drive from my house to LAX and there's parking and then you gotta carry all your stuff through the airport and then, uh, and then you're out a couple hundred bucks and you can't really plan things or you fly to Burbank, that's more expensive and then you're connecting through Phoenix. Um, or if you drive to Tucson, the, the GPS has it at, at seven hours and 45 minutes. So it's right at the in-between time if you factor in packing, packing all the bikes and everything else. That, well, you can see where this is going. I'm on a road trip. I'm, uh, I'm driving to Tucson. So uh, we got we got the mountains here. It's beautiful. Um, I'm not alone on this trip. I'm not I'm not by myself because I have these bugs. I have all these bugs. Look at them. Look at them. I think the car is totaled. Nothing like stopping for gas somewhere outside of Tucson off of I-10 and realizing not only have you been here before. You've purchased fireworks here. Mount Lemmon is a climb that a lot of pro cyclists know very well. All the guys in Boulder, everybody thinks that they should live in Boulder if you're a pro cyclist. And then come like December, it's they're snowbound and they're like, oh crap, I have to train. And they all end up in, in Tucson. Basically like all winter, there's just a sea of professional cyclists from all over the place just blasting up this mountain. And I was once a professional cyclist and I was once one of those dudes. The end of 2012, I, I met Tom Danielson. Um, I, I did not want to like him and, and I reluctantly did. He, he invited me to train with him in Tucson. I found him to be nice and I was confused by it because he was a doper and we hate dopers. And he said, hey, let's train in Tucson, come to Tucson with me this winter. And I did. It was a month, it might have, it felt like two years of just hanging on Tom Danielson's wheel going up Mount Lemon. I left Tucson having trained harder than I ever trained before. And all I was was just hanging on trying to not get dropped and just being amazed at how much better he was than me. That spring I was just killing everybody. Like I, like I, he goes off to Europe and I go off to the little American races and I'm playing with dudes. And, and from there, Danielson was calling Vodders like, hey, you gotta sign this, this, weird, this weird kid from Georgia. That was the ball that got me rolling on the, the pro career, the, the world tour. That's what put me on the map. It started, it started right there in Tucson. Hello, Phil! That was so convincing, like we didn't plan this. <laughs> I was crouched beneath yep. the window. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to the home stretch. It's great to have you here. This is our wall of stretchies. These are our, the 17 athletes we've had in the first five months. Of, uh, so we got to put your photo up here too. Okay. Which will be fun. But 17 athletes in how many months? Um, five months. Not bad. No, not bad at all. Great, great people. One of these is not like the other. Brad. <laughs> Brad, what are you doing? <laughs> Could there be a creepier picture, too, to be the only dude who's been in this house? That's Big Brother Brad. We think that's an awesome picture. <laughs> oh, well, of course it is. Everything about Brad is awesome. Exactly. The nutshell story of the home stretch is we provide housing, free housing, for pro and elite female cyclists that are currently, you know, struggling with the salary inequity that mm -hmm. goes along with our sport. Um, or they're high level elite cyclists that are on the cusp of turning pro and they're in that same dilemma of being able to have to hold one, if not multiple jobs and able to just do what they right. do. You can't so. train full time if you have to be a waiter or a bartender. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. So, and that's something that we hope to make known on a wider level because it's not just that these are women who are, oh, just looking for a place to ride their bike. You know, it's a right. full Right, no, they're on. not tourists. They're ever, the, the women here are serious. Right. And they're, they're training and they're, they're cooking healthy stuff. Right. A lot of beets in this house. <laughs> there are a lot of beets. A lot of beets. That is very Sweet true. Sweet potatoes. I didn't see any sugar. I've seen the sugar. Okay. I feel like I should fill you in on the, on the 
the happenings, the, the background here. The, I arrived in Tucson and uh, I, I headed to Mount Lemmon two days ago to do a little, just spin the legs out after that seven hour drive. And um, the road was closed due to fire. There was a, it's not a forest fire, because there's no forest up here, it's a cactus fire. It, but it had to be, because or sand fire. Um, but there was a fire and the whole road was closed. And kind of looked like this climb was gonna be off. Um, I came in yesterday morning, and Sam, who, who normally does the filming, the filming for this stuff, um, had his flight, he was supposed to leave yesterday afternoon, so, uh, so I get over there and I look at it, and road's closed, the, the rangers at the bottom don't know anything, and they're kind of like, yeah, you can't go up there, and I'm like, well, do you think tomorrow? And they're like, yeah, I, I don't know, you can't go up there. Um, so we canceled Sam's trip, we, uh, he's not gonna fly out here if it looks like we can't do it. And then they, uh, and they open the road. Um, so, I'm still gonna go up it. I'm not driving that seven hours again back to Tucson. Um, but the filming, this is a little Survivor Man. A little bit, a little bit rough. Now, I was gonna leave this part out, but I don't wanna lie to you guys. Um, and I wanna be true to it. It's, I said Survivor Man, it's Survivor Man. Normally, when I, when I do these missions, I've got the Cliff uh, Lemon Lime mix in, in my bottles, but uh, this one, this, this trip for Tucson in true Survivor Man style, it's filled with urine. This is my own urine. I don't know. You, you people keep, uh, I, I, I ask on, you know, on Facebook what climb I should do, and, uh, and, and people say Mount Lemon, so I go to Mount Lemon. And even though, like, the record is Tom Danielson, who did nothing but drop me when he raced, and when I raced, we raced together a ton. Um, so this is kind of an impossibility thing, but I think, like I've got all the dorky gear, I'm convincing myself, I'm gonna go for it. The, uh, like I was thinking about it where, on Palomar, I kinda, I didn't go for it right away. I, um, I, I know, I knew that my best time was, was 55, I didn't think I could put four minutes on my best time. So I kind of paced it thinking like a really good day would be 53s, 52s. Um, and then I realized like it was, I could have had it. Uh, you, I, you, I kind of, I talked myself out of it. I was, it was, it was practicality was, was hiding fear um, or, or defeated self-talk or, or something. And I realized like if I'd believed, if I'd gone for it, if I'd, if I'd known that I could do it, um, I would have done it, but because I didn't think so, I, I held back, and here we are. I probably did that in my pro career, too. I got caught with 500 meters to go at national championships. I got second overall at the Tour of St. Louis. Um, so, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe we, we put that to an end here, and, and I go for this believing and, and making the effort that, that would win, and um, maybe that makes me blow up and go five minutes slower than I would have. But uh, but I want to try it. So fingers crossed. Hey guys, I just want to keep you updated here. There's uh, everybody was on time. We had a schedule, and we're running a little late. And it's entirely because of me. I haven't pooped yet. <laughs> and the thing is, like, at a bike race, I always say like, you don't get to go when you're ready. You go when it's time. In worst retirement ever, I go when I'm ready. <laughs> so a slight delay, but uh, but I got I got my coffee, and we're working on it. If you guys want anything inside, uh, come in and take a load off. Get you some prunes or something. Bike's ready. The cable's out. This is some new stuff. We haven't done this yet. The main comment I got after the first after the Palomar episode, the main comment I got was that I need to set up Strava live segments. I, I at least a thousand people, at least a thousand people messaged me and explained how I'm an idiot for not using Strava live segments. That was a decision because a I think Strava is definitely a thing where like people upload and you're staring at the computer, and I don't want to remove the dorky part of it. Like I, I want to admit that that happens, um, and b like looking at the segment when you're looking at oh I'm up, I'm down, I'm ahead, like. That's not the effort I've ever done. Like I trained for like time trials, and I'm sort of used to doing it that way. Um, 
but it would be nice to cross the line and know if you have it or not. So I have it in here. I'm not sure if I'll use it. I uploaded the segment. Um, I don't know if I'll refer to it at all, but that's, but you can leave me alone on that one too. Now, if only I knew someone who could tell me how to beat Tom Danielson on a climb. What, what's the fire? I saw something on Twitter. Like, I, I mean, don't, don't, don't act people. like you didn't start that fire, Tom. <laughs> Well, I didn't. I wasn't sure they were actually going to do it. I only paid them two hundred bucks, you know. I just... <laughs> Number one, the bottom is where you make the time because that's where all the oxygen is. Your performance on the hill is going to get progressively worse because you're you're running out of oxygen, which is a double whammy because you're running out of glycogen at the same time, right? And altitude is harder on your glycogen. So start hard. It's like the key to going fast up these climbs isn't watts. It's like how you use your effort, everything you can do to build and maintain momentum. Right. Like all those little kickers, right? You want to hold back and then over the top, you want to accelerate and get your speed up, hold your speed, hold back again, get your speed up. The headwind is where you want to go steady and the changes from the headwind to the tailwind or the headwind to no wind is where you want to accelerate and do a lot of watts and get the speed way up and then bring it back down, hold the speed. And then when you get the headwind or the steep bit, then you settle down and you hold it again. Okay. This is why you were never a good time trialist, Phil, because the <laughs> I'm going to get this right now that I'm retired. I'm going to figure it out. I got it. I got it. Babe. You got it. Okay. You got it. <coughs> awesome. <coughs> it was rough with five minutes left in the effort. When I looked, I was 10 seconds down on Danielson's time. With five minutes left, there's nothing you can do but just squeeze it all out anyway. I think he didn't quite save enough, and, and I'd saved a little bit more over the climb. So in the last five minutes, I, was, I, I squeezed it out. And I'm going to be dead honest here. I was rethinking this entire mission at that point in the last five minutes. The, this whole thing, the worst retirement ever. That was ugly. That was so ugly. It's, mostly it's tongue-in-cheek because nobody's making me do it. It's fun. So it's not really the worst retirement ever. It's fun, but... Uh, it was pretty bad. The last five minutes, it was it was really not uh, it was not okay, and I was definitely not enjoying myself and uh, and wondering what I was doing with my life and my weekend. But we got it, and it was nice to cross the line and and know that we had it. With the little the little the computer screen told me that that it was a success. I'm still out of breath. This this whole thing was it was it was a horrible idea. This whole this whole thing. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Good. What does everybody want? And how many? Do you want Ziplocs in case you have leftovers? Are we going to have leftovers? We'll come back and ask for yeah. Ziplocs. Okay, cool. Yeah. Everybody has cookies. Mm -hmm. The crew is all set up. <laughs> Except she has to act like she can eat gluten. Well, I'll eat all the gluten out of it. The GF cookie. All right, this is, you know. this is my cookie. We should have gotten you a bowl of chili. And now we're updating. All time. Number one. Number one, got it by, what was that? I can't do math. Oh. Like 18 seconds? Nine. 18 seconds. 18 seconds? Yeah. This is a victory cookie. Woo! Yeah. Welcome to the victory cookie. Yeah. All right. 18 seconds. I'm happy, everyone, everyone gets a Strava segment. I was like, oh, no big deal, Strava. I'm happy. This was hard. I'm gonna own it. All right, now I'm gonna eat. All right, I'm leaving Tucson. Got a long drive back to, to LA ahead of me. Um, it feels good though. It feels good. I gotta say, I was worried after after Diablo, after Palomar. Um, Palomar, I I didn't think I could get, and I could have Diablo. I knew I couldn't get, but suddenly, like, we're 0 and 2, and and it occurred to me, like, as much as as it's not about the result, it's about the mission. If I went 0 and 10 for this whole year, that would be pretty embarrassing. Um, and then Mount Lemmon was one that like I really didn't think was attainable um, So So it's nice. There's there's honestly there's nothing more empowering than than attempting something that you don't know if you can do and then getting it uh, So that's been that's been my Tucson experience um, And now I have now I have a day of, of driving